Hi guys and welcome back to English Harmony video blog. That's me, Robbie, of course, from EnglishHarmony.com and today I'm going to share a little bit awkward experience with you that happened to me a few days ago. You see, English fluency is an interesting thing. It fluctuates, which means that it changes over time. It's not static at all times. Some days you can speak better and your fluency is going up. Some days you can speak worse and your fluency is going down. And it's a natural cycle. There's nothing wrong with it. The most important thing to bear in mind is that your overall trend is definitely going upwards, provided that you're working on your spoken English fluency at all times, just like I do. So, even though some days my fluency might get a bit worse, I'm just resting assured that over a long period of time, my fluency, despite its fluctuations, is going up and improving the whole time. And if I look back a few years ago, I can definitely see the improvement. All I have to do is just check back my earliest YouTube videos and I can definitely see that now I'm more eloquent, more fluent and it provides me with that extra motivation that keeps me going hard, working hard on my fluency and despite some little setbacks, I simply rest assured that my fluency is going to be back on track in a day's or a couple days time. It's natural. It's all part of the English harmony philosophy whereby you don't have to freak out about such bad fluency days. You just accept it and you go through it by applying certain tricks and certain methods that I'm talking about on my blog. You can check out this article, English Fluency Management Techniques and Methods. If I'm not mistaken, that's what it's called. Anyway, the experience that I wanted to share with you was a few days ago, I was in a state of a uh, little bit worse English fluency than normal and I was in a shop, in a hardware shop and we were buying uh, things for for our household, for the garden if I'm not mistaken and then when we had completed the purchase I wanted to ask for the receipt, right? So I was asking the cashier the question, uh, can I get the check please? And can you see how wrong was I in using the word check? It's the wrong word. In the English language, receipts are not called checks, they're receipts. And in this particular context, when I spoke to the cashier and asked for a check, it didn't make any sense to that English speaker. And why I did it? Because the old translation mode whereby I translate from my native language into English, right? A little bit of that old habit kind of appeared and instead of saying the word receipt, which is a normal English word, I said check, which is again another normal English word, but you see in my language we describe receipts as checks in Latvian. We say a check and everyone knows that it's a receipt, but in English language these words are used differently. But for some reason I just said, can I get a check, please? And uh, right after that, I corrected myself. I'm sorry, can I get the receipt, please? And it was all fine. And nowadays, I'm not even getting overly stressed out over such small mistakes. But I'm just sharing this experience with you so that you can see that even uh, quite a fluent English speaker such as me, even I can make stupid mistakes like that. And it's totally okay to do that, right? We're just human beings. We all make mistakes. And even though you may be watching my video and you may be thinking, wow, I wish one day I'd be able to speak in English as fluently as Robbie does. Believe me, guys, I'm looking the same way at other people and wonder, wow, I wish I'd be able to speak like that guy. Although nowadays... I have adopted the kind of mindset whereby I'm totally happy with my current performance and I'm not beating myself over my inability to perform a certain way, right? So it's not really true what I'm saying that I'm aspiring to become 
like some other people and I'm secretly admiring them and I'm feeling inferior. No, I'm not. But all I'm saying is that the bar can be always raised. I'm not a totally fluent English speaker for that matter. You can always be more fluent, more eloquent. You always can have a better way with words. So if you find yourself in a situation when you feel really bad about your English, please don't be. It's totally natural that at a certain point in time, provided that you have a certain level of English, you'll be able to perform at a certain level. And you cannot be humanly expected to speak better than you actually can, right? Your fluency can go up and down, but it's still going to be around your area of capability, so to speak, right? You can do better than you can actually do, provided that you've been working on your English and achieved a certain level, right? You just have to keep working on it. And given enough time, over a couple of years, your fluency will have improved big time, believe me. And then I warmly advise you to do some video recordings so that you can go back a couple of years later and compare your current English level with the one you had a couple of years before and you'll definitely see an improvement, right? So, the point of this video was to tell you guys that even I make mistakes and uh, especially for foreign English speakers such as me and you who are constantly working on rewiring our brain with spoken English patterns that are used in natural, real English speech due to the detrimental effect of the traditional English studies that we had to perform over a long period of time and uh, we de developed the so-called writing mode whereby we constructed sentences in our brain by way of translation and uh, creating sentences from scratch by sticking words together, right? Because of all that, we find it harder to achieve total English fluency as or than you see, I made a simple mistake of using the word as instead of than, right? And it's totally fine by me, right? I'm not going to edit this one out because I want you to see that I'm totally honest with you guys. And I'm not hiding anything. And uh, making small mistakes is totally human and, and that's fine, right? So basically, we find it a bit harder than someone who would be learning English totally naturally from right from the beginning, right? If someone has been uh, working only on their spoken language and developed the English language as means of communication predominantly, then they wouldn't have these issues. But just because we have these issues, right, we, we will probably constantly, always struggle just that little bit with this translation mode, the writing mode syndrome and things like that. But it's fine. You have to accept who you are. And I totally accept who I am. Whenever I make some mistake at work and, and struggle a little bit with conversations, I don't beat myself over that anymore. I just know who I am. I'm Ravi. I'm a fluent English speaker. But because of the traditional way of the learning the English language, which was how I acquired the language in the first place, right? Because of that, it has left an imprint on my ability to speak with others probably for the rest of my life. But I'm constantly working on my English and uh, I warmly suggest you do too. And over time, those mistakes, those moments of awkwardness and embarrassment will become fewer and fewer. I promise you that, my friends. So, can you please bring me the check? You see, this phrase in this instance is the proper phrase, because when you're sitting in a restaurant, you've finished your meal, and you're asking for the waiter to bring you the check, that's when the word check is appropriate, right? Because that's a check. So remember, English is to be acquired contextually. Don't learn the word check, and then don't try to apply that word on many situations, but use, just learn new word combinations, new vocabulary based on situations. So imagine yourself in a restaurant speaking to a waiter and tell them, please bring me the check. And then 
it on a completely different spoken English practice session where you imagine yourself being a, or a customer in a shop, use the phrase, can I have the receipt, please? Because those are totally different situations as far as using the words check and receipt is concerned, right? Okay, I'll stop the rant, my friends. And if you have any questions whatsoever in relation to this matter, please pose them in the comment section below. If you're watching this video on YouTube or on my blog, or if you're listening to the podcast, please head over to my website where you can publish your questions on any blog post that I've uh, created there, or you can just submit your query on the contact me page, right? So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening, my friends, and talk to you soon again. Bye-bye.